Hello folks, in this video I'm going to look at how to use masks in Pygame. Using rectangles for collision is a very quick and efficient method, and it works for most cases, but the problem is that not all objects in a game are perfect rectangles. Using rectangle collision on the soldier sprite could give false positives, because a collision would be detected with a boundary rectangle. So what do we do if we want to get more accurate collision checks? Well one method would be to refine the overall rectangle to be more representative of the object, but this still leaves areas that give inaccurate collisions. We could take this one step further and use a bunch of smaller rectangles, and this could be a good intermediate solution, but this could be time consuming to set up. So to get pixel perfect collision where the image itself is checked, we can use masks. There are two approaches we can use for this, and we'll look at both of them in more detail now. The first approach that we'll look at checks for an overlap between the two masks. Now I've got my starter code here, and within here I've got my game window, some colors that I've defined, I hide the mouse cursor, and down here I've got my game loop with the event handler. All the code for this tutorial is going to be linked in the video description so you can get the start code if you need it. Now I can begin setting up my images. So just above the game loop I'm going to create the soldier by loading in the image and creating a rectangle from it. I will then create a soldier mask which I'll save as soldier underscore mask variable and to do that I will call pygame.mask.from underscore surface and what we pass in here is the image, so the soldier surface. That will create a mask, but it's not going to be visible on the screen. So just for this demo, I'm going to create a mask image. And I will call the soldier mask that I just created and run the to underscore surface function. So what's basically happening here is that I am creating the mask from the surface and I'm creating another image from that mask. This isn't necessary in a finished game, but it will allow us to draw the mask on the screen to check that it's working as expected. I'll go into my game loop, and just after filling the background, I'm going to paste in this code. It's exactly the same as a normal blit function, but the surface I pass in is mask image, and I will draw it at 0, 0, because that's where the mask is created. If I run this now, you're going to see the outline and a filled image of the soldier. So that is the soldier's mask being shown as an image. Now I can repeat the process for the bullet. I'm not going to type all this out. I've got it copied here, so I'm going to paste the snippet and explain what it does. I'm not loading an image for the bullet. I just create a surface. I fill it in red and then I create a mask from it just in the same way as I did with a soldier up here. I want to position this bullet at the mouse cursor. So within my game loop, I'm going to first of all get the mouse coordinates, save them in this pause variable, and I can then blit it down here. If I run this again, I'm going to have my mask as before, and now I can move this red rectangle around. There's no collision detection yet, but that's what we're going to add in now. To check for collision between the two masks, we check for overlap using the overlap function. This function takes a couple of arguments. Other, which is the mask to check for an overlap with, and offset, which is the difference between the X and Y coordinates of the two masks' origins. In this image, mask 1 is the soldier, and mask 2 is the bullet. And you can see the X and the Y offset that we need to calculate. Let's apply this check to our two masks. So just at the top here, after I update the background, I'm going to add a comment to say check mask overlap. And I will add an if statement to check for the soldier mask dot overlap. First argument is the other mask, which in this case is the bullet mask. And then the second argument is going to be the X and Y offsets. For the X offset, I take the mouse X coordinate and I subtract the soldier mask's X coordinate, which is zero. And then I do the same thing for the Y coordinates. Of course, I don't actually need to subtract 0 in an equation, so I can remove both of these. And that is my if statement complete. As a visual confirmation, if I get a collision, what I would like to do is change the rectangle's color to red. Otherwise, I will keep the color as green. I just need to make sure I add a line here to say bullet.fill with that color. Now if I run this code again, and I move this bullet over, you can see that as soon as we get a collision in one of the pixels, it changes from green to red. And this gives us a very precise collision check. But what happens if the image of the soldier is moved around? Well, I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to update the position of the soldier down here. And I will do this by updating the rectangle's top left coordinates. And then I will add a blit function down here to draw the soldier image on the screen. If I run this again, I now have the soldier down here, but when I move the mouse cursor over him, there's no collision detection. If I go back to where my mask is, this is where the collision is still being picked up. So that means that as the image moves around within the game, I'm not getting the collision being updated accordingly. And that is because our offset has now changed. So I need to take into account the soldier's new coordinates 
in this function up here. I need to update the x and y offset calculation. I still use pause 0 and pause 1 because these are the mouse coordinates, but I also need to subtract soldier underscore rect dot x for the soldier's x coordinate and soldier underscore rect dot y for the soldier's y coordinate. Now the offset is being calculated correctly between the mouse, which is where the bullet is, and the soldier. If I run this again, I don't get collision with this mask as before. In fact, I don't even need to show this mask anymore. But I do now get collision with the soldier. And that pretty much covers mask overlap. Now we can move on to the second method, which uses the sprite collide function. If you found this video helpful so far and you want to support the channel, then don't forget to hit the like button as it helps a lot. This approach is similar, but it uses sprite groups and sprite classes, which means that I need to reorganize the code from before. I have the same starter code here, but rather than typing everything out, I'm just going to paste in this snippet. So this creates my soldier class, but you'll recognize this section within here already from before. I load in the image first of all, then I take the rectangle, I assign the rectangle's position, and then I create a mask. I then do the same thing for the bullet, but I also add an additional method for the bullet, which allows me to reposition it based on the mouse coordinates. So the code is more or less the same as before so far, it's just structured in a different way using classes. Next I need to create an instance of each of these, which I will do down here. Then I will create sprite groups for each one. And lastly, I will put those instances into the groups. If you've worked with sprite groups and classes before, then this should all be very familiar to you. The next thing I need to do is call the update and draw methods in my game loop. First I will define a color variable for my rectangle. I'll then pass that color into my bullet group so that the color of the rectangle is always changing based on this variable. And lastly, I will call both draw methods so that the soldier group and the bullet group are being drawn on the screen. If I quickly run this, we can see the green rectangle following the mouse and then the soldier in the middle. So now we can work on adding in the collision. The sprite collide method that we're going to use takes four arguments. The first argument is sprite, which is the main sprite that we're going to do the collision check on. The second one is the group that we're going to check the collision against. The third argument is do kill, and this is a flag that will determine whether this sprite object is deleted or not based on the collision. And then the last one is a collided argument. This is a callback function to specify what collision method to use. By default, this uses rectangle collision. If you left that last argument out, then the collision check will be done between the rectangles of the objects. Let's add this check in. We're going to do it just before this definition of the color, because the color is going to be dependent on the outcome of the collision check. I'll say if pygame.sprite.spriteCollide. The first argument is the individual sprite, which will be the bullet. The second argument is the soldier group, because I'm checking against all of the soldiers. In this case, there's only one, but in a typical game, you may have multiple items within that group. The third argument is do kill, which I will set to false. And then the final one is the type of collision function that I want to apply. So we say pygame.sprite, and in this case, because I want mask collision, I'm going to say collide underscore mask. This will override the default setting of rectangle, so rather than checking for the object's rectangles, it will check for their masks. If this condition is met, then we change the color to red. Otherwise, we keep it to green. If we run this code again, as soon as I make contact, you can see that it detects the collision and it changes from green to red. Since mask collision requires more processing time, using it to check collision with many items at once could slow down your game. One approach to improve the performance of this is to first of all check for rectangle collision, since that's faster, and then if that collision is detected, we go to the next level of detail by checking for mask collision. So effectively, this collision check here is going to be our second check. Before that, we want to check for a rectangular collision. And I'm going to do that with essentially the same code. So we'll take this, we'll move it up. But now I just need to remove the last argument. Remember, if I don't specify that last argument, then it defaults to a rectangular collision. Now, if that happens, I want to change the color to blue. And then I need to make sure I indent both of these lines in here. The logic then becomes, if we have rectangular collision, then we change the rectangle color to blue, and then we go on to our second check, which is the more detailed check of mask collision, in which case we change the rectangle color to red. However, if there is no rectangle collision, then the bullet remains green. To help visualize this better, we need to draw the rectangle. 
So just down here, I'm going to draw the rectangle of the soldier. Now if I run this again, as I move the mouse around, it stays green, but once I move into this boundary of the rectangle, it changes to blue. Now at this point, we will start the more demanding check of mass collision. And as soon as I get that collision, I go into red. And that covers mass collision using two different methods. If you guys found this video useful, then please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.